This is Postmaster Jones with Triple Threat Talk live on location at WWE <laughs> Monday Night Raw Conseco Fieldhouse, Indianapolis, Indiana. Going to be an epic show tonight for you. CM Punk and John Cena, the WWE title hangs in the balance. What will the chairman of the board, Triple H, have in store? Also a Divas Battle Royal. I got my good friend here, the head of security for Triple Threat Talk, Mr. Falbush, here with me tonight. Mr. Falbush, what do you think about tonight's proceedings? It's going to be a so, should be a good show, and I can't wait to check it out. And we'll talk all about it live on Triple Threat Talk. Check us out 5:30 Eastern, 4:30 Central Time, only on YouTube. This is Big B with Triple Threat Talk. This past week, Peyton Manning signed a deal worth 90 million dollars for five years. You know, I wonder how Peyton feels about that. Coach. You call that practice? Yeah, I'm auditioning for Dancing with the Stars. I figure if Hines work into it, pff, number 18, I'm a shoe in him. What you need to be practicing is beating that pass rush. Get on the field! Alright, Coach. Let me grab my helmet. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another exciting edition of Triple Threat Talk. This week on the show, we're going to be talking about some NFL preseason. We're going to be talking about the NFL season together. We're going to talk about this week in wrestling. And as you can see, Postmaster here had a pretty yeah, busy weekend. Yeah, the name of our show is Triple Threat Talk, but it seems like there's just two of us at the moment. <laughs> he uh, he was at two WWE hey. events and the uh, Brickyard 400 over the weekend. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, you have a nice nap there? We're filming here. Oh, yeah, it was a great nap. Um, oh, give me a break. We didn't, we didn't film the whole show, did we? No. No, we just you, started. So, oh, so you woke up with some time. Uh, the beginning. Yeah, th thanks for joining us, by uh, the way. Glad to be here. <laughs> oh, give me a break. But, uh, uh, we're going to start off this week. Uh, buy or sell was pretty popular last week, so yeah. we're going we're to do that again. Uh, I'm going to do it with some NFL players this week. Interesting. Right? I like it. Yeah, uh, a lot of new players, different places, so it's going to be very interesting. So uh, we're going to start off with, uh, what do you think about... Buying or selling awesome wall from the Raiders oh, to the Eagles. Easy buy for me. I mean, one of the best cornerbacks in the game. The Jets tried to get him, and for some reason didn't come through, and now the Eagles get him. And I'll just say this. The Eagles look like a big Super Bowl contender with the acquisitions they picked up. Uh, Vince Young, who's Malcolm Vick's backup. Uh, they got a great team, great team going, and awesome wall is a great pickup by the Eagles. Absolutely. I mean, what, what more can you say that he hasn't already said? I mean, he's an excellent pickup. He makes that defense even better than they already were. And with the offense that they've also picked up, the Eagles, as much as I hate to say it because I can't stand Michael Vick, <laughs> they're a legitimate Super Bowl team. And uh, so, in the words of NSYNC, I'm bye, bye, bye. <laughs> I mean, uh, when we do our football special, which is coming up in a little bit, I guarantee you probably most of the offense will have the Eagles going at least to the NFC Championship is what they look right now. Right. I don't think so. I I'm going to buy off some more as well. And I think that, I think that with the acquisition of Vince Young, and uh, with of course Awesome Wall, they they did pick up some great some great great players. Yeah. And I think uh, they're definitely NFL worthy and NFL Super Bowl worthy. I'm sorry. Um, I think an important thing to note here about Awesome Wall, he's just kind of like Deion Sanders at the cornerback position. He can completely shut down that side of the field. You're gonna think twice before throwing a pass yeah. 15, 20 yards deep when you see Awesome Wall covering your main receiver. Or if you're going to use your your tight end as a slot receiver at the time, you're going to see definite you're going to see definite defensive schemes kind of plotting around that because you know if Austin Law gets to you, it's going to be six the other way. Yeah, real quick. Yeah, definitely. Sure. definitely. Um, what do y'all think about Hasselback to the Titans? Buy or sell? Now if this will come from a shock for me because I'm a Seahawks fan, but actually I'm going to sell this one. Um, I did like what Hasselback did last season. However. For them to get into the playoffs where they played the Rams in that play-in game to win the NFC West, Whitehurst played most of the game. He, he, basically, he basically won the game for them. So, Hasselbeck's getting on in years. Obviously, he's not as good as he once was. And they did draft Jake Locker. So, I figured he's going to start since he's the rookie. And maybe, we'll see what happens in preseason between them. But it seems like they're probably going to push Locker to start and Hasselbeck will be the backup. But I sell him at this point because I don't see him really being a huge commodity for the team at this point. I'm buying Matt Hesselbeck, and I'll tell you why. I think why they signed him is for the reason of the veteran role. They're not going to start Jake Locker right away. They're going to have Matt Hesselbeck there to mentor Jake Locker. He's going to show him the ropes. 
He's going to show him how to be the quarterback he needs to be in the NFL. I think he'll start for the Titans. I think Locker may end up starting the game, some games before the year's out, but I'm definitely buying Matt Hasselbeck. Uh, I'm going to sell, although I completely agree with everything that Postmaster just said. I'm going to sell him, though, because when you're putting your eggs into the basket of somebody who's been around the league for that long and you do have a, you have a true rookie at the quarterback position, I think that it's going to equivalent to being just like a true freshman, except for Jake Locker has started games. But it's the fact that, you know, it, it's the – the 49ers have the same problem this year with Colin. Alex Smith is clearly not going to be the better choice here, but you got to you got to be able to show the quarterbacks the rope. And I think that Hasselback may he's got the experience, but I'm not quite sure he has the the age and years to show everything that right. that that he should be doing at peak at his peak performance level. And another thing about Hasselback is it seems like from coming from my standpoint as a Seahawks fan, it seems like. When he was hurt, so he's, he might be injury prone because he's he's a little bit older in age. When he's injury prone, he, we, the team just doesn't function well. So it seems like he, he he seems like he gets injured too frequently. So. Right, and and I did want to add on one more thing while I'm selling him. Let's not forget, leave it to our division, the NFC West, to put forth the first playoff team ever to have a losing record going into a playoff team. And we're uh, proud of that fact. They had they were seven and nine last year, and I think that's another reason you sell because it's not like it was an epic performance well, last year. Well, before I, I, before we continue that. about that, all I'll say is you know if it wasn't for them being seven and nine getting that playoffs, we never would have seen that tremendous tremendous play by Marshawn Lynch. That's true. That's true. No. Uh, we were talking about the Eagles earlier. We're going to do one more buy sell here. Um, we we're talking about the Eagles having such an all star cast. We forget to mention that they lost somebody. They lost their all time. Scorer David Akers, a former former player of University of Louisville, they lost him to my team, the 49ers. So uh, buy or sell David Akers for the 49ers. Uh, I'm gonna buy, and it's just kind of hard to buy a kicker because he's not really a big part of the offense. You know, except for field goals and extra points. But for your team, it's a great acquisition because it seems mm-hmm. like in maybe pressure situations when they're maybe down by three. Uh, to maybe even the score or take the lead. It seems like he's a very, very reliable kicker. One of the best kickers in the league. I think a very good pickup by you guys. And I'm not going to lie, as a Seahawks fan, I'm worried about games that might be a, a field goal. I'm not going to look because it seems like Akers is probably going to make it. So yeah. I definitely buy David Akers. I'm buying David Akers as well. I mean, he's one of the most clutch kickers in the NFL. I, I've got to say, I'm also going to buy him. He's got practice kicking in difficult spots and Candlestick Park is the toughest place in the NFL to kick a field goal. Next to Heinz Field. That's true, next to Heinz Field. Um, they're, I mean, they're, they're definitely in the top two. And when you're anywhere on the eastern seaboard or off the bay, Oakland also has the same problem. They're in the top five. It's very hard to kick a field goal. Absolutely. Anybody else I wouldn't feel comfortable with unless they were from the Steelers or from Oakland. But I think that David Akers is a great acquisition. And, and not to mention, I mean, you, you mentioned, you know, kickers not being cl- not being like, you know, big players. But when you're talking about the all-time scoring leader, the Philadelphia Eagles, yeah, that's a that's something to be proud of. That's a good. Yeah, it seems like it seems like most games come down to like a field goal at the end. So right. it seems like that's going to come through in the clutch for you all. And an interesting uh, fact to note uh, regarding free agency. This is just a, like a wow fact. Uh, since uh, the lockout ended and free agency began, uh, this was the other day I read. The Arizona Cardinals have made 72 transactions already wow. in this free agency. Oh, they're making uh, making good use of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, they signed Kevin Cobb, and I hope that they're getting the correct players. Yeah. Because, as you know, the Arizona Cardinals have been definitely... They signed down. Todd Heat. That is a great team. Yeah, I saw that. I, when I saw that, I saw on the bottom of the screen, I was watching uh, ESPN First Take, and I saw... Oh, all the teams where they like going. I saw Tariq. I say whoever gets him, that's a great acquisition. He's a heck of a tight end. I mean, Kevin Cobb is going into a great situation. I mean, they got a very good running back situation in Arizona. He's got Larry Fitzgerald, who's one of the most dynamic receivers in the NFL today, and now he picks up Todd Heap, who's one of the most prolific tight ends in the game. I mean, Arizona seems look like, out. Seems like our division is going to be really stacked yeah, next I, year. So I, was, I said that last week on the show. I think the NFC West is going to rise up. I mean, because when you've got You've got definitely the 49ers are in a good position with the, you know, if Alex Smith gets the West Coast offense, and he is a very smart guy, I just don't like the way he plays. It, but you can't take away from his intelligence. Extremely smart player. If he can figure out the West Coast offense, and that's exactly what the West Coast offense is supposed to be, something where you outsmart your opponent, if he can use his intelligence, I will have every faith in the world in Alex Smith. It's just right now it's not there. But you would have Alex Smith and West Coast offense. You would have Vernon Davis, who is one of the 
all, as you said, one of the greatest tight ends on the field right now. And then you've got Michael Crabtree. He's going to be out a couple of games, but we should not have him for week two, week right. three, and so on. Uh, I think the NFC West is definitely reloading, and hopefully we can relive some glory years in our division. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, we got some interesting questions under the, the comments. Yeah, well, thanks for and the questions, thank guys. You, really the appreciate it. Um, if there's anything we can do to make the show better, any questions you have for us, as we always stress, leave them, leave them. Leave yeah, this them. this is for you guys. So. This is for this you is your guys. show. This is where this yeah. is where we address your questions or right. concerns. I mean, we got several ways to reach us: Twitter at Trip Threat Talk, Facebook, uh, Triple Threat. Talk. You heard him right, Trip Threat. We couldn't fit it all out. And yeah. then uh, email uh, yeah. us at Triple Threat Talk at Yahoo Absolutely. So um, the first question came through: Would you rather see CM Punk or John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania? Can I say neither? Yeah, uh, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I if I had to pick, I'd probably pick Punk versus Taker. But to be honest, I'd rather see Jericho versus Taker because I think no, don't get me wrong. Punk is obviously the big guy right now, and Cena is obviously that way too. But I think it'd be really cool to see Jericho come back and challenge him at WrestleMania because I just feel like last last WrestleMania with Jericho, oh, he wasn't the last WrestleMania. The WrestleMania before with Edge. It was good, but I want to see Jericho face someone like Big, like the Undertaker, and I used to see if Taker faces someone like CM Punk or John Cena. It's not as big as he's faced the previous years. Like he faced Shawn Michaels twenty five and twenty six, and he faced um, Triple, H. Triple H last year, which I was there for. So it seems like Taker needs to face a bigger superstar, and, and Chris Jericho is obviously legendary status at this point. So I think I'd rather see him face Chris Jericho. But if I had to pick from those people, I'd probably say CM Punk. I would say neither as well. And I think if I had to pick between the two, I agree with uh, Big D. I think CM Punk would be the better choice. He would be the better fit for The Undertaker. But who I would love, 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 love to see The Undertaker face, honestly, is Sting. Yeah, you stole my thunder, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I don't want to see either of them. I wouldn't even choose, actually, if you gave me the choice between them because I, I like the storyline with CM Punk and John Cena. Right. Uh, and I hope that they continue to do this. Um one of the things that I do like, though, Sting signed a six month con- uh, contract extension at the time, right before WrestleMania, right. Uh, with TNA. Six months, and you can't tell me that wasn't some kind of political move to block Sting from being at this year's WrestleMania. Right, because it was like a report in January where right. they, W was like really close was, to getting him. It was all he had to do was sign the dub line. TNA came in at the last second. So I don't tomorrow. think that happens this time. I think I think and I think it's better this way too yeah. because I think Sting. An Undertaker close out, Undertaker twenty and zero, and then he retires finally. Yeah, I think he's right. Like, he needs to go. He's been he's definitely been a great great thing. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to keep on with the 49ers thing because I know there are thirty one other teams in the NFL, but we definitely had a question: why we thought that the 49ers would sign Matt Hasselback when Alex Smith was uh, was already their quarterback. Well, when we posted the show, we filmed it on Tuesday, and this is this is you know we filmed the show on Tuesday. And we posted it up on Wednesday on YouTube. And um, I mention that because if you know anything about football, I'm not trying to be insulting, but the deal was that unrestricted free agents couldn't sign until that Friday. Right, right. So we did not know if Alex Smith was going to be able to re-sign or not. So that's why we were mentioning the fact that Matt Hasselbeck could be going to the 49ers was because um, – there was that there was that questionable thing there. Uh, Alex Smith gave his word that he'd be coming back to the Bay Area, and Jim Harbaugh seemed to like what he heard. And then we had him resigned. Uh, obviously, there was some speculation on the inside right. for that deal because you can't just pass up someone like uh, uh, Matt Hasselback when you're bringing up a young quarterback like we were telling earlier. Uh, you can't you can't just pass that up. So they clearly knew Alex Smith was going to sign resign before everyone else did. Right. So that's right. all I want to say about that. Right. Uh, uh, we had another one. If you could fire top, who are your top three wrestlers you'd like to see fired? Wow, fired. That's tough. Um, top three. Wow. Can you come back to me? Let me think about that one. Sure. Uh, top three wrestlers. I mean, really, right off the bat, Rey Mysterio. Out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> I mean, we all know that my distaste for Rey Mysterio is way up there, and he's done it all. I mean, he's done enough. I mean, go ahead and let him go. Um, rep. Kane. I mean, get rid of Kane, too, while you're at it. I mean, he's, really? 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's, kind of, he's had his years. He's too. had his years. I mean, he's getting up in age. He's been there long enough. But he's back in the he's Sign, back in the major player status. So is Sign, Ray. He just got taken him, up by Mark Henry. Signs him up and coming guys in with that same point. Get rid of Big Show too. Where you're at it. I mean, Big Show, Kane, Rey Mysterio. Okay, right I, I got my three now. Uh, one might shock you because I think he was on your top ten last week, if I'm not mistaken. Jack Swagger. Okay. I think they can get rid of Jack Swagger because the reason I say that is because. At WrestleMania 26, he won the Money in the Bank. So you're thinking, okay, this guy's going to be part of the future of the WWE. He wins the world title from Jericho all that, on that SmackDown, and he's world champion. His world championship run was abysmal. No one took him seriously. I sure didn't. And then what's he doing now? He's facing people on superstars. Yes. He yeah. fought Chris Masters. So, like, he's not... Why is he... He's not... He just shouldn't be there, to be honest with you. It's, it's, he had a push, and now he's just not anything. I think he's... He's not really that good, to be honest with you. Look, they were trying to build him as the next Kurt Angle. Because he kind of does the same things Kurt Angle does, like the ant clock and stuff like that. I think Jack, and he's American. Yeah, I think Jack Swagger. I've seen enough of Jack Swagger. Uh, I agree with one of your picks. I think Kane needs to go. Uh, I think Kane's been there way too long. Uh, I love Kane. Kane was awesome with the mask on. Wrestling he took the mask off. He doesn't have that same intensity as he used to. I, I think Kane should go. Right. And the last person I think should go is probably Drew McIntyre. I like Drew. I really like Drew McIntyre, but they haven't done these. Are fighting words. I I like. Don't get me wrong. I like Drew McIntyre. I love Drew McIntyre. He's one of my FCW favorites with Sheamus, also. But when you have a guy come into the WWE and Vince McMahon himself brings him in and says you're the chosen one, he's going to be the future of the company. What's he done lately? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because what have they chose to do with him lately? Nothing. Exactly. There's when reasons you give, behind when you, that. Obviously. When you give these people a chance, just, I think they show. I think we've seen that the last couple of weeks with Zack Ryder too. No one is unsalvageable. Well, it just, it just. I know. Yeah, obviously if they get the right push, but it just seems like when you have a guy, they say this is the chosen one, and they keep they, they kept mentioning for like the couple months he was uh, he and he got the push and became Intercontinental Champion. They were saying, oh, this guy was personally signed by Vince McMahon. So you think like this guy's a big deal? He's not a big deal. I like no. Drew, but he's not doing anything. I think I'd like to see. Um, I think. Um, Michael McGillicuddy. Uh, and I, as you guys know, I'm a huge Nexus proponent. I like, I, I like, I like Joe Henning. Now, now that CM Punk... I do too. I think he could... I, I'm, I'm going to say I would like to see him fired to be brought back later. And what I mean by that is sitting in FCW, work on him a little bit because I like what they've done. I'd like them to come back as Joe Henning. For real. I, mean, I, I definitely would. And I'm going to say the same thing about David Otunga. I like the two guys. I'm a huge Nexus fan, but obviously with CM Punk feuding with... Cena. Yeah, it seems like Nexus is over. Yeah. Right, absolutely. And then uh, Heath Slater. No, Wendy. You don't like Wendy's? Don't like no, Wendy. I mean, come on. We went to the we, we went to the, the house show on Saturday. He won the Battle Royal. The face of Daniel Jackson. He did. He did. So obviously, wow. uh, yeah, that was a waste of time. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, yeah. That's it for the questions. Thanks That's for the questions, questions, guys. Thank really appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, on so, talking about the epic weekend that I had. Uh, on Saturday, me and Big B here, we attended the SmackDown House Show. KFC Yum Center. Um, very interesting. Like I said in the beginning, I was able to meet Christian earlier in the day. Yeah. That was rather neat to talk a few minutes and talk the business with Christian. Won't get into details. Yeah, it's, it's, it's private. It's private. It's private, <laughs> private, private. What me and the captain had to say yeah, right, between right. me and the captain. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, they had several decent matches. They had a battle royal, as you said. He and said the thing, and, I, and you said to me at the show, and I completely agree with you. I said to John, uh, the guy who went with us also, you said something, and I completely agree with it. They said, you said they shouldn't even have the battle royal because in the, uh, during the night, people that were in the battle royal kept repeating in matches. So I completely agree with that. The battle right. royal was completely pointless. They didn't even need the battle royal. I mean, they had the battle royal, and then, like, almost everybody that was except in for the Seamus. battle royal. Except for Seamus. Was in a match. And the two main eventers, yeah, obviously, exactly. Orton so, and Christian. So you saw everybody before the right. matches. So. so, I mean, it was a decent card. It was enjoyable. And before, the main event was really yeah, good. Before we get into that, one thing that I have to say, and I'm kind of disappointed, as you can see, I'm wearing a Seamus shirt, and I got it at the show. And Seamus was outside a uh, local radio station, 997 DJX was out there. And we got there, and one of the guys <laughs> was doing a raffle, and he mentioned that Seamus was out there 15 minutes ago. So I missed Seamus by 15 minutes to play a video game with him. So I'm pretty disappointed. You couldn't have seen him anyways. And oh! Also, uh, I'd also like to point out that maybe, just maybe, Cody Rhodes might have slightly helped Christian beat Randy Orton. I don't like those quote fingers. Well, let's not forget as much as he owned Cody Rhodes. <laughs> oh, Cody. Cody Rhodes lost to the Usos. 
the Uso brothers. I told you once. Jimmy and Jay. I told Who? you. I t- <laughs> Uso. I told you once. I told you twice. I'll tell you 5,000 times. Ted DiBiase got pinned, not Cody Rhodes. It doesn't matter. He was his tag team partner. In and, then, and then, and then, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go to the doctor here. Doctor, does it go down as an L in Cody Rhodes' column or a W or a it, it doesn't goes matter? Down as an L. I know. Who cares what you think anyway? I'm the I'll, 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 say, I'll, I'll say this, think. all right? After the match was over, Cody Rhodes gave a bag to Ted DiBiase, and he didn't put it on. Disrespectful, Co- disrespectful, Ted. Disrespectful. See, see, he can't even. He gets to talking about Cody, and he gets. You're starting to sound like Michael Cole over there. I know you're like Michael Cole loves the Miz. Big B the loves Demiro. Cody. You know the what? Oh my! You know what? The more you make fun of me about liking Cody, one of these days you're gonna get yours. Just remember that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Whatever. Whatever. So anyway, that was a great time. And then, I like how you lost your voice a little bit too. If you can, I have, as you can tell, I got honey lemon water tonight, and I am <laughs> struggling to talk. So if you can, you know, bear with me, bear here. with me a little bit. On Sunday, I got to experience uh, the Brickyard 400 up in Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, in a shocker, uh, Paul Menard he drives for Richard Childress Racing, and is sponsored by his father, John Menard. A lot of people question that. Say. He only gets to race because his daddy's a billionaire and he, you know, has got a silver spoon. You know what? Hats off to Paul yeah, Menard yeah. and Slugger Labby. You pulled off the upset. You beat Jeff Gordon. No. Who's one of the kings of Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He is a four-time. That's his, that's his four race, time, Brickyard. Four-time, four-time Brickyard 400 champion. And, I mean, Gordon come charging up. And Paul Menard used the fuel strategy that seems to be working a lot this season. And to hang on to win. A couple other guys who had great nights. Uh, my man, Tony Stewart, struggled all day. I mean, I'm sitting there going, oh, dear God. You know, he's riding in the late, high 20s, 30s even. Most of the race, Lux finally turns, you know, and he finishes in sixth place. Uh, Dale Jr., as usual, in the back. Jimmy Johnson, a bad day, so that was good to see. And I was glad to see the crowd. Uh, there was more people there than expected. That's good. Uh, there was actually a higher percentage people here this year than, than compared to last year. And also, for the, a lot of times this season, and yet again this Sunday, the TV ratings went up again. Very so, good for NASCAR. Um, hats off to Paul Menard again. Uh, the Brickyard was excellent. And so, I mean... And then uh, last night... Right into wrestling here. You, you were into Raw. Well, can we cover wrestling in a second? Because before we do that, I want to talk about another sport. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. Do your thing. All right. Do your thing. They didn't want me to talk about this, but this has kind of got people in an uproar. Yeah, this is all going to be the... Let's talk about the doctor. We're going to sit here. Hey, this is, yo, I, baby. This is... This is... Uh, this is something that's kind of weird. What do UK and John Cena have in common? Well, as of right now, you're not going to be able to see both of them because there was a uh, there was a Legends game announced with the Dominican Republic. Coach Calipari is coaching the Dominican Republic team, and they set up a little match at uh, a little exhibition game at uh, Rupp Arena, and it was going to have people like it, it does have people like Rajon Rondo, Keith Bogans, John Wall, Demarcus Cousins. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and. You know, even if you don't like UK basketball, you like those players because what they're yeah, doing right. for the NBA. It's like the John Wall dance. Right. right. Yeah, right. the Dougie, I mean. <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> and they were going to. We already, have, saw, we already saw enough dancing from you, right? They were going to have one of the most legendary <laughs> coaches ever coach that team. Joe B. Joe B. Hall. The Beesman. Who currently does a show locally with the Joe B. and Demi show. Denzel Crown. Uh, there, there was a lot of. Uh, there was a lot of excitement for this. It turns out Joe B. can't coach the game because Eloy Vargas, who is currently a UK player, is on the Dominican Republic team. And this is a problem because this is used as an unfair recruiting tool. The question I have for the NCAA, and I'm not going to put this very long, the question I have for the NCAA is this. North Carolina, who I, I'm one of the rare UK fans that is a North Carolina Tar Heels fan. I like the That's Tar Heels. That is a very good shocker. And the one I keep good shocker is Duke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like the one on Everybody hates Duke, Duke, Duke unless you're unless you're you like Duke. unless you like Duke. Yeah. The doctor. Let's not forget also that uh, Sam Bowie wanted to coach as well, along with Joe. Right. Yeah. Sam Bowie did want to coach. 
The, the thing, why do I bring in North Carolina? They do this exact same game every year at Chapel Hill. Every year except for with North Carolina legends and pros against current, U, against current North Carolina recruits. I don't see the difference. If the NCAA could please explain this to me, I'll tell you where this is going to end. This is going to end with the NCAA being so biased towards other players. We've covered it before in previous shows. If you don't know what I'm talking about, every single word of it is true. Where this is going to end up is the NCAA is going to self-implode, and we're not going to have another. We're not going to have it because it's going to go to the four super conferences that many coaches, John Calipari and Rick Pitino and other coaches have talked about forming four mega conferences to put everything in because the NCAA is so biased. It is getting ridiculous. And people are getting sick of it, including me. Right. So off that rant, let's go to some wrestling. All right. Wrestling. Which Postmaster Jones was that? a part of. And before he goes into that, uh, all the pictures from this past weekend, uh, including the Saturday House Show at uh, Yum Center and the Raw at Indianapolis, all on our Facebook page at Triple Threat Talk, so you can check those out. Absolutely. Uh, so I was in attendance last night for Monday Night Raw. Uh, I went with the head of security for Triple Threat Talk, uh, Mr. Fallbush. Fellow Fallbush. Fellow Fallbush, absolutely. Who posted a completely inappropriate yet funny remark on his Facebook page. Yes, he did. And <laughs> he did? He did. I didn't, I didn't read that. Well, yeah. Fellow Fallbush, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell give you a shout out. Okay. Okay. I mean, I got to give him Hey, permission. Fellow Fallbush. Hey, uh, he said, and I quote, and I uh, congratulations to Amy Winehouse for completing one week of sobriety. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> it was funny, but totally inappropriate. Wow. Uh, right, right. But fella, you know, fella, you fella. just fella. lost some fan base. Fella, 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 fella. We didn't say it. So. We didn't say it. We didn't say it. It, it was the fella. It was the fella. It was the fella. Was the fella. Uh, so I went with uh, my beautiful wife, Stephanie, uh, Chris's sister, Emily, and, of course, fellow Fallbush. Um, they had, uh, you know, obviously superstars. Not much there. Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, it's not even on TV. We had Vladimir so. versus Primo. Primo's okay. epic. Vladimir wins. Mm -hmm. Then we have, like you said, Jack Swagger on the superstars against the masterpiece, Chris Masters. Swagger wins in an ankle lock. Woo! Woo! So then we move I mean, on. If, I mean, well, if you want to check it out, it's on WWE.com on Thursday, so if you're interested. Right. I mean, if you really want to see... Jack you know, Swagger. Jack or Swagger. Primo. Or Vladimir Kozlov. Yeah. So um, the crowd was very into it last night. I mean, I was there. I mean, even during Superstars, I was like, wow, the crowd is definitely hot yeah, tonight. Yeah. I mean, you could just tell there was a buzz in the arena. And, I mean, as soon as the you know promos went off in the pyro and CM Punk is introduced, it was from that moment on till the very end was just um. Freaking believe. Yeah, that seemed like the first row in a while they actually had opening pyro. <laughs> I haven't seen opening pyro in a while. It's been a while because yeah. I mean people have been starting off in the room yeah, right, and right, right. some conversations. Yeah, so you get to see pyro, congratulations. Yeah, I mean and uh, I was glad for that because it was Stephanie's first show and she had a great time. It was a good experience for her and awesome. to be able to see the full experience with the pyro yeah. and the you know Hopefully the, there'll be some wrestling shows coming our way in the future. Yeah, absolutely. As they always absolutely. say. We hope so, to come back to Louisville in the near future. So, uh, what what stands out to you all about last night? Zach Ryder. <laughs> Zach Ryder. I mean, he, his second week. The thing is, he was on Superstars, I believe, the previous week, and on SmackDown as Teddy Long's assistant, and he's on Raw this week. I mean, the guy's everywhere. And he was on Raw last week. Yeah, the guy's everywhere. Yeah, he's got his own YouTube show. He's got a new T-shirt. The guy's blowing up everywhere. I I think this new move that Triple H is in charge. I think they had to open their eyes and say, okay, look. We can't ignore Zack Ryder anymore. The guy is just too damn popular. We have to get him on TV. Oh, and they're and, doing it. And an interesting fact about Zack Ryder. Well, two things, actually. Number one, last night if you watched Raw and you heard the We Want Ryder chant, <laughs> Triple Threat Talk Zone, Postmaster Jones, and Fellow Fallbush were responsible for getting that whole arena started by that. And Zack Ryder tweeted today that his shirt, which is on sale at the merchandise table at the And at WBShop.com. Uh... Outsold the rock shirt. I wow. think that's really good. Way to go for Zach. I mean, woo, congratulations, woo, woo. Zach. That's good. Woo, woo, woo. Another thing that I liked about Raw was the promo with CM Punk. That was great. I like sure. all the promos yeah. with CM Punk. I'm telling you what, when you're talking about buying and selling, CM Punk, buy, 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 buy. I did see a sign last night, though, that I got to disagree with. I saw a sign, 
and it said, CM Punk saved wrestling. I got to disagree with that. But I will say, he damn sure made it fun again. Absolutely. absolutely. So he made absolutely. it fun again. And, I mean, you know, we've been seeing all these all these kitty things. And, I, you know, what? I've seen a lot of resemblances with stuff we've said lately that is actually translating onto the WWE Raw arena. So it seems like we're, doing, know, seems like we're doing our job right I, here. Maybe somebody's watching us over there. <laughs> maybe. Who's watching us? But, I mean, when, when he was like, he said, Chuck Lordinus, he he's watching. Said, Whatever. <laughs> CM Punk made a reference to like what we did on our first show, talking about people that uh, people that aren't or people that just do things because they're fans. You know, when, yeah. when Postmaster said Rey Mysterio Jones, oh, we're gonna smile. CM Punk said something very similar yeah. to yeah. that last night. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it's uncanny a lot of the things that we're yeah. seeing. So maybe we're not the only ones that feel as far as as far as matches go last night. Uh, uh, mediocre at best. Yeah. I mean, the Divas Battle Royal, terrible. Uh, yeah, the, I thing mean, I, the thing I asked him, and I was asked, uh, wondering myself last night, where's Maurice? Actually, I found out today via actually her very own Twitter. She actually has to get hernia surgery, so right. hopefully a speedy recovery to the yeah, lovely Maurice. Yeah, speedy recovery to Maurice. Yeah. Uh, so Beth Phoenix Wins. will face Kelly Kelly. And actually, I did like what I saw last night. Uh, Kelly Kelly gave her a nice hug, and then Beth Phoenix didn't really give her a hug back, did He'll she? He'll turn mm-hmm. back. Yeah. I, like, I liked that. It gave some kind of uh, good... You know, direction for the feud so they can face several stuff so not just two friends facing each right. other. Right, right. And since then, when did Sako become green and look like a snake? No, of course <laughs> not. Too, no. That was Cobro. I, I, I guarantee you we will see that eventually at the WWE shop and merchandise oh, booth. It was already available last night at the merchandise booth. Why didn't you buy it and bring it on the show? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what are you good for, huh? What are you good for? So but what? I mean, so you had uh, a couple decent matches. The main event was Alberto Del Rio. Scary. Versus Evan Bourne. But you already knew Woo. that. Yeah, you guys did already know that. <laughs> I do like how Alberto Del Rio is using a simple move, the arm bar. I mean, and Very we powerful. got we got some people using the sleeper hold to win. Dolph Ziggler. We got we got. It seems like it's going back a little bit to where the simple but complicated moves that you know are painful, and, you know, not really, but right. that you know could be painful. Right, right absolutely. You know, that some of these classic moves are being brought in again. I like that. People are winning with yeah. it. I like it because it worked in the end. Yeah, 80s. Del Rio's armbar is very vicious. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, going into last night, the big question on everybody's mind, it wasn't who was going to win the Divas Battle Royal. It wasn't... You know, any of that, it was... Who what, is the WWE champion? What would Triple H, the chairman of chairmen, the <laughs> like COO... I like that. You like that? I, I had that as a sign last night, <laughs> like actually. Uh, what would he decide to do? And what did he decide? Well, he no decided sure. two champions, one night to decide, what? SummerSlam. Yeah. But, before he could really decide that, the vice president of talent relations... Oh, Lord, Lord, it he sounds like down. he's like a thousand years old. I know, doesn't he? God, he has no charisma at and all. He what? Wa- he's at Look at him. <laughs> he wanted to strip John Cena of the title. Whoa, whoa. And John Cena basically put him in his place and said, you only wanted to strip me because I knocked your block off. Yeah, really. And <laughs> money in the bank. I enjoyed that. I did. <laughs> and then he was going to do it, and Triple H's like, I have no problem with that. Yeah, no, that was funny. So um, so we get, we get uh, John for Cena Spira. versus CM Punk. Title versus title. Yeah, that was not That was the dark match that you all you saw. Unified champion. We also found out uh, a no holds barred match for the world heavyweight title. Christian. Christian Orton. versus Randy Orton, and of course we found out Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix. So so far, SummerSlam looks pretty good. SummerSlam pretty good. I and mean, uh, less than two weeks. Right. And it seems like the way the direction's going on SmackDown, it seems like Sheamus is going to fight Mark Henry. Right. And uh, something else that I think is interesting to note here is last week when they did the titles. The fans cheered CM Punk, like, majority. Right. Last night in Indianapolis, it, was John Cena? it seemed like John Cena won that right. night. So Punk won, Cena won. And I think... We got one more Raw to see. We got yeah. one more I Raw mean, to go. Hopefully, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that when they face each other at SummerSlam and there's a unified champion, hopefully they bring out a new belt. And I, I, that's exactly what I've been thinking because the spinner belt is getting old. And they just, it but just, it's the most ridiculous thing. It, it just thing. seems weird that if you have two belts, okay, and one guy has this, one guy and bo- the other guy have the same looking belt, 
What's the sense in making, okay, say this guy wins, give him the same belt again. That right. makes no you sense. You know what I want to see? I want to see a cult of personality championship <laughs> belt. I think that would be epic. But we did have a dark match after the Raw cameras went off the air. It was champion versus champion. Right. We were like, holy cow. And pictures of that match are also on Triple Three Talks uh, Facebook. John Cena versus CM Punk. You're thinking, is this going to happen tonight? Could something come of it? And thanks to apparently a new weird pairing, but seemed to be quite interesting. Uh, the Miz. Miz Truth. And our truth um, Oh, I'm talking about our truth right now. <laughs> yes, I'm going to talk about it. But anyway, uh, they come down and interfered. So because of that, it was a double disqualification. Nobody won. And then afterwards, um, Cena posed for the crowd, handed out his wristbands, and off we went our merry little way. It was a very good Raw to see live and in person. It was definitely a, one of the best Raws I've seen in person. Raw's uh, always fun in person. Right, absolutely. But the whole Punk promo with Triple H was very good, one of the best promos. I mean, when he said, basically, do you have to ask your wife's permission, <laughs> I was rolling laughing. And then Triple H with the, everybody's been bagging on my wife for 10 years. <laughs> Including <laughs> Triple H himself. <laughs> right, absolutely. I'll never forget the line that Triple H said. Even, what do you say, even a jumbo jet looks small flying into the Grand Canyon. <laughs> whoa, 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 I'll whoa. never forget that. Oh, that was right. classic. So that was that. While they were married, too. Yeah, so that was enjoyable. You got to go to Raw and also this house right. show on Saturday. So a great week in wrestling. and uh, A great, great week in sports. I mean, the NFL sports. is shaping up. Are you ready for football? Yeah, no, Preseason I, before is coming we, up. Before we cut out for the show here, I went a little bit over, but that's going to happen from time to time. Um, we're going to have our football special in a, little, in a few weeks, uh, probably after preseason, or the week before the NFL season starts. It's going to be an hour. And it's not going to be on a regular Wednesday as our shows are. Our shows normally are run Wednesday at 5.30, depending on how YouTube wants to display them. Um, but our football spectacular, as we call it, Triple Threat Talks football spectacular, will probably air that Saturday. So we'll go look out for that. So it should so, be good. So a great show, guys. Uh, for Triple Threat Talk, this is Big B. Hi, I'm Postmaster Jones. I'm the doctor. See ya! Thanks for watching, guys. Check us out on Facebook, like us on Twitter, and send us an email, comment, or anything you want at triplethreattalk at yahoo.com.